smartcast you are listening to a mint production brought to you by hd smartcast when you purchase a health insurance policy a contract binds the insurer to ensure financial compensation in specific medical emergencies the insurance contract terms are not necessarily limited to only emergencies but cover regular visits and hospitalization charges Hello everyone I'm Navneet Dubey from Mins Personal Finance team Today in the 5th episode of Basics of Financial Planning we will discuss about the importance of health insurance To answer this question we have invited Suresh Sadagopan he is a managing director and principal officer at Ladder 7 Well Planners Private Limited Welcome to Why Not Mint Money a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth So let's get started with your money journey. Uh hi Suresh welcome to the fifth episode. Uh today let's touch upon health insurance topic. So my first question is like what is health insurance and how it is important for everyone especially if one has a family. Uh as far as health insurance is concerned most people call it medical insurance or uh, uh mediclaim i mean in, in fact it is uh, very popularly known as mediclaim uh so essentially uh, a health insurance policy covers any hospitalization situation and any uh, expenses arising arising out of a hospitalization situation so it is very very important for everybody to have a health insurance whether you are young or you are somewhere in the middle or old age everybody requires a medical insurance today because hospitalization is something that can happen to anybody at any point in time i do understand that uh, at a lower uh, age uh, at the younger age uh, the probability will be less but you cannot really rule out hospitalization even for people at younger age i have seen that at close quarters so uh, health insurance is uh, absolutely uh, required uh, and you cannot say that it covers only hospitalization so it is not really uh, that very useful because uh, hospitalization is where we tend to spend a lot of money uh the typical doctor consultation or investigations and all that does not really take too much money in fact there are some health insurance policies which also cover uh opd uh, kind of situations also but again i mean nothing comes free you basically will be paying for all that so normally what we suggest is to have a comprehensive health insurance which covers the most important thing which uh, can actually bankrupt a person which is hospitalization and the incidental expenses due to hospitalization okay. and of course there are multiple things which we will discuss about uh, uh, i mean which also a medical insurance policy will cover so it's absolutely essential so i cannot emphasize this enough okay okay so like what should one look for as a feature and benefits while buying a health insurance cover yeah 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 so that's very very important to uh, understand uh, so health insurance policy the last thing which people should look for is the premium Uh, i am telling this upfront because i mean people tend to compare uh, uh, insurance policies one with the other and uh, they tend to think that okay this is 22000 that is 30000 so 22 is better than 30 i mean we cannot really go uh, like that we need to look for the appropriate benefits in a health insurance policy because if that benefit is not there then it can be disastrous uh, even though one may be having a policy so let us look at what are all the things which are uh, absolutely required in a health insurance policy so one of the things is uh, of course uh, uh, pre and post hospitalization expenses i i am not talking in any particular order but these are some of the important ones uh, so before for for some reason suppose you get hospitalized uh, prior to that condition of hospitalization one may have to go for certain investigative tests and one may also have to be on some preparatory medication also and if it does not work then probably one would have gone into a hospital so pre hospitalization normally 30 to 60 days uh, typically uh, is a period which uh, medical insurance policy will cover and post hospitalization anywhere between 60 and 90 days uh, for that particular condition any medi- uh, any medicines consultations investigations all those things will also be covered in a uh, health insurance policy apart from that uh, one needs one need, one would want to have a cashless hospitalization so uh, these days most of the policies cover uh, hospitalization condition cashless 
one will need to inform in advance but uh, it can be uh, a casual situation in a case of an emergency we may not have we may not be in a position to inform in advance but okay. that those situations we can we can still take care i mean uh, uh, medical insurance policies can cover uh, that thing also then one has to look at the hospital network that is very very important so suppose you happen to be in a particular place and uh, uh, many of the major hospitals suppose they are in the network then it's actually a good thing and uh, it's important for uh, the hospital to be in a network because in many cases uh, not not in many cases in most cases if the hospital is not in a network you will first have to pay the money suppose the hospital bill comes to let us say 3 lakh rupees you will have to pay that 3 lakh rupees and you will have to claim that so in this situation what happens is that in in some of the policies they also say that if it is not under our network where we have negotiated the rates then you will have to bear uh, that is what is called a copay you will have to bear maybe 10% 15% and we will bear balance the 80 or 90% so that also comes into the picture so having something in the network for cashless and uh, to ensure that there is no co- copay is uh, is uh, very very uh, uh, important uh, then uh, that there are other things like uh, domiciliary treatment uh, i mean it happens in rare cases where uh, the treatment happens in one's home because the hospital beds may not be available or the person may not be in a position to be moved away from uh, i mean from the home because of the critical medical condition so those kind of uh, facilities whether the medical insurance policy covers uh, we will have to see then day care procedures are also important today because i mean many of the conditions uh do not require a full hospital admittance for more than a uh, for more than a day normally medical insurance policy covers for hospitalization beyond 24 hours so yeah. in the case of let's say an appendicitis operation in the case of a cataract operation in the case of many other such conditions you go in the morning and you are discharged in the evening and that is also now covered there are typically medical insurance policies cover something like 140 150 such uh, uh day care procedures that is also important so like this there are so many things which are which we will have to look at while deciding whether this is a worthwhile policy or not and then of course we will have to look at the bonus how much bonus are they giving uh, then uh, there is also something called a restore benefit so whether uh, they give a restore benefit some policies uh, do give what is called a restore benefit they restore uh, uh, the sum assured if the sum assured gets exhausted for a Uh, due to some hospitalization so like as you said uh, like day care is also covered similar to that do you think opd cover or subscriptions is necessary as many insurers and healthcare firms have started providing that coverage so also yeah. like uh, what are the things that one should uh, look carefully when buying all these products so, so some of the things which one should uh, look at i have already uh, told you uh one of the other things is also there are some waiting periods in some of the illnesses or some of the uh, some of the operations or conditions which you want to correct there will be a waiting period for example take the case of hip replacement take the case of uh, cataract so there will be a waiting period of something like 24 months after which you can actually perform those procedures also I mean, it cannot be planned i mean you cannot have a cataract and uh, for the purpose of getting a cataract operated you cannot take a medical insurance okay yes. so so now is that is that available to you at least after 24 months so that one will have to see so that is another thing that uh, one can see and typically pre existing illnesses uh, whatever you have declared uh, in the application form typically after 36 months or 48 months even the pre existing illnesses are fully covered typically so whether that is Uh, that is something that you find in your policy that you will have to see because this is very very important over a period of time you want everything to be covered not just some things and lot of other exclusions are there it should not be that way and then there are small multiple small things like maternity and all that i mean not every policy covers uh, that but typically there is a long waiting period as far as maternity is concerned if at all it is covered like something like 5 uh, to 6 years waiting period may be there so i mean it may or may not be that very helpful for a person then ambulance and things like that will be available that's a small thing in some cases uh, if one happens to be in a uh, inaccessible place then air ambulance and those kind of things are, some policies are covering 
and some other policies are covering even uh, suppose you happen to uh, contract an illness or you have to be operated upon abroad some policies do cover that so my, there are so many different things which policies cover but the important ones i think i had mentioned earlier on and one or two uh, important things i just mentioned uh, just now okay okay now so- coming to opd see opd is not really that very critical to have if your policy is ha- having that uh, it's wonderful no problem at all but if uh, opd is not covered it is not such a major glaring omission because i mean probably for an opd uh, i mean check up you may have to pay maybe 500000 or maybe slightly more than that if that particular thing is not there all the other things are uh, properly covered then i think the policy is actually good enough but if it is also there if it also uh, uh, is part of the overall policy uh, benefits then it's fine but it is not a it's not a very big deal okay okay so like uh, when should one uh, go for this medical insurance and like like at what age and how much medical insurance should one ideally have yeah 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 very very appropriate question medical insurance is required by every single person so irrespective of age like i said uh, the probability of a person who is uh, young uh, getting an illness and probably getting admitted and all that probability may be low but okay. we cannot say that uh, uh, a young person will not have to go to a hospital at all i think we all have examples of very young people uh, getting admitted to hospitals for a for even small things and and uh, big things i mean i i know people who have even suffered a heart attack before they they had turned 30 so you can never say this is not possible at all uh, in my situation so it's ideal to have a medical insurance in every single case the basic minimum which i suggest for uh, adults is about 5 lakhs i am saying that is the basic minimum and for young children it can be the base minimum can be 3 uh, lakhs but the higher the cover the better it will be so uh, when i say higher the cover so if your overall policy is able to cover maybe 15 20 lakhs for you that will be an ideal amount but uh, coming to a median amount i would say probably a 10 lakh cover will be a good thing in today's uh, case and maybe a 5 lakh cover would be fine enough for a child okay so, what if somebody is uh, covered under corporate group policy then also one should have a medical policy from a retainer Yeah, 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 Namita. It's very, very important to have a personal policy. I'll tell you why. Uh, see, today, uh, company A, where you happen to be working, may have a wonderful uh, health coverage for uh, for oneself and for the family. But uh, when one, uh, in pursuance of the career, if one goes to company B, company B, B may be good in most other things, but they may not be great as far as uh, medical insurance is concerned. Okay. So, in that kind of a situation. uh then again if you have a personal medical insurance policy any shortfall in the coverage in company b will be taken care of by your own personal medical insurance policy and i'll want to add one more thing here see there are lots of people for for various reasons planned and unplanned they leave their jobs okay maybe maybe uh, they want to be an entrepreneur or they may want to take a sabbatical for whatever reason maybe for studying or other reasons so in in these kind of situations uh, you had a corporate uh, medical insurance now when you leave the job that medical insurance is gone right so then in that situation you have to have a personal insurance so it's always better to have at least at the base level like i said 5 lakhs for a uh, for an adult and at least 3 lakhs for a child at least that level of medical insurance one should have and i can tell you this much that for a 35 year old person 5 lakhs for uh, Uh, for for the couple maybe 5 lakhs 5 lakhs for the couple and maybe 3 lakh 3 lakh for uh, the children all put together may not be more than 20000 rupees today per annum okay. so there is no real reason why somebody should not have a separate medical insurance today it is such a major security net and every single person needs to have that okay okay so like as you said uh, the premium shouldn't go above 20000 so in that case can you explain us uh, uh, do do one require a separate super top up policy for that and also you talked about restore benefits so what is it in yeah, that case, if if a policy is giving a restore benefit do you actually require a super top up policy 
yeah yeah so when i talked about 20000 i i kind of gave an indicative number so what i'm saying is in the overall scheme of things if you have to spend just 20000 rupees in a year it may be 16 it may be 20 it may be 22 i don't know okay uh, but it doesn't make too much of a difference uh, to uh, to one's finances uh, negatively and at the same time it is such a useful security cover that's what i was trying to uh, kind of indicate now uh, let us talk about a, a restore benefit see some of these policies uh, suppose you take a 5 lakh uh, policy uh, some of the policies have this uh, uh, restore benefit where once you exhaust the basic cover the restore benefit will kick in so i'll give an example to uh, illustrate that uh, suppose you uh, i mean you have a 5 lakh policy and uh, the first uh, hospital admittance you have to pay let us say 2 lakh rupees so that is paid from the base policy now <clears throat> the second hospital admittance uh, one has to pay 4 lakh rupees so out of the 4 lakh rupees 3 lakh rupees will be from uh, from the base policy and uh, the restore benefit will kick in at that time and uh, then uh, uh, for any other claim uh, then the restore benefit will again apply so normally uh, there is one restore benefit available uh, in most policies there are additional uh, restore benefits which one can avail of some policies have that where you have to pay extra premium and you can avail of the uh, of, of that uh, thing now what is a super top up a super top up i mean if a policy does not have a restore benefit you have something called a super top up where there is a certain level of deductible that is if your base policy is let us say 5 lakh rupees you can take a super top up with a 5 lakh deductible and a 10 lakh cover means that the super top up will come into effect only after you have paid your 5 lakhs from either from your own pocket or through some other source when there is a hospital hospitalization occurring so in the case of a super top up uh, so the first 5 lakhs will not be covered beyond 5 lakhs then automatically that particular policy will uh, completely completely cover so the once you exhaust that 5 lakh rupees the super top up will completely take over so if there is a situation where there is a 7 or 8 lakh uh, uh, i mean hospital admittance overall in two three instances the entire 7 or 8 lakh will be completely covered in that okay so so do you need a separate critical illness insurance in such case, in that cases if you have medical yeah. insurance cover and a top up policy yeah so a uh, very good question because uh, uh, see in the case of a critical illness uh it is going to be covered by your medical insurance policy itself let us take a critical illness like for example cancer okay cancer is uh, i mean fairly becoming somewhat common today unfortunately um uh, will it be covered by the basic medical insurance policy and whatever treatments are required for cancer will it be covered the answer is yes uh, so suppose one has a 10 lakh uh, policy and another 5 lakh of uh, bonus will it be covered yes up to 15 lakh rupees one can avail of uh, the benefits in the medical insurance policy but some of the critical illness policies are of uh, such nature that uh, the amount of money that one may have to spend on the critical illness can be of very very high order like for example in the case of cancer over a period of time you may have to spend a huge amount of money and that can happen in a within a year also so if one has uh, apprehensions on that or one has a Uh, history in the family or one is uh, one wants to protect uh, i mean the family from that situation a critical illness cover will be over and above the medical insurance policy see medical insurance policy is an indemnity policy that is if you spend 4 lakh rupees the medical insurance policy will maximum pay you 4 lakhs whereas the critical illness policy is a benefit policy meaning on the onset of a critical illness like for example cancer based on the doctor certificate of a certain severity i mean if it is a, a level 4 level 3 wagera so if the medical insurance policy uh, says that at level 3 or level 4 we will pay they will pay the entire amount suppose you have a critical illness policy is let us say 10 lakh rupees they will pay the entire 10 lakh rupees at one shot so that is typically how the critical illness uh, policy will work so why is this important one is of course like i said you will be spending much more than what a medical insurance policy may cover so from that point of view it will be useful and having a good critical illness policy will be useful in another uh, sense also uh, that a person's uh, ability to earn 
may also get diminished in a in a cancer kind of situation a heart attack kind of situation or a brain stroke kind of a situation these are all critical illnesses the ability of the person to earn a living may become impaired and to partially offset that if one has a reasonably good critical illness policy i i told you in the beginning that on the onset of the critical illness immediately that en- entire amount will be paid out so suppose you have taken a reasonably big critical illness uh, policy let us say 25 lakhs 50 lakhs kind of thing that amount will come to you it will help while treatment also it will also to some extent help uh, in in offsetting the potential for lower income going forward in the future or a period of uh, no income uh, because of the critical illness so so like are these one time policies once the disease is diagnosed you get the coverage so can you take it next year again i mean if you are cured yeah so uh, so no- normally that does not happen uh, whereas there is some other thing which uh, happens with a critical illness there are also critical illness policies where if there is an onset of one critical illness they will pay x amount of money let us say out of 25 they will pay let us say uh, 50% or 33% or something like that and they will keep the cover on for the balance critical illness because one critical illness is not the only thing which can potentially occur yeah. to a person it can be more than one so there are some critical illness policies which continue after the first year of uh, of that critical illness but typically critical illness of one one kind let us say cancer they will not keep paying again and again typically that is how it is normally okay and okay. Uh, if the policy is of such a nature where they have paid 100% then they will not renew next year okay okay so like my last question to you is uh... is it a good idea to take health insurance cover for parents yeah so uh, that is a very uh, i i'm going to give you a nuanced answer there is no straight forward one size fits all uh, here okay if the parents uh, health condition is good uh, and they are in their 50s probably uh, maybe we may still be able to take a, a medical insurance it is possible that if uh, parents are in their 50s they might have themselves taken a medical insurance but typically i think the question where you are uh, where you are coming from is probably the person is well beyond 50, 60 yeah. uh, so in that situation what do we do so typically in that kind of a situation uh, including one's parents in a medical insurance policy is very very difficult most of the time they will be beyond the age of entry and even assuming they are uh, they are within the age of entry in the medical insurance policy it may be rather difficult for them to undergo the medical test clear the medical test clear the medical underwriting and actually get a policy so it's going to be rather uh, difficult so the the thing that one can do there are two things one can do if one is working for a corporate the group medical insurance most of the time they allow the parents to be covered in fact they allow the parents and in-laws to be covered again it uh, it really depends on how the group medical insurance policy has been structured so you may have to pay a certain amount of money as a premium that is always generally uh, i mean optional you pay a certain amount of premium and you can include your parents and in-laws uh, in the in the policy so that is the best way if you ask me to cover the parents now apart from that what can what can one do because parents at that age they may have certain medical requirements the only thing which we suggest to our clients is to have a contingency fund because at that stage if you don't have insurance and if you don't have your employer given insurance for parents then the only other thing which we can do is we can we can put aside a certain sum of money and if at all there is a medical admittance or medical emergency we can use that contingency fund to take care of that those medical situations for parents okay okay so and uh, uh, can you also elaborate on uh, like if somebody is uh, at the age of 65 plus or 70 plus and they have never ever taken a health insurance and they met with some you know some disease or illnesses and after that they want a policy so will they get the policy or is there there's no other option just to ex- like spend from your pocket yeah so there are two three things one is if they are beyond 65 uh, most of the policies do not admit a person beyond 65 that is the age at entry is uh, typically 65 or less so okay. a person is at 70 uh, there is no there is no way that we can actually give a policy second is uh, suppose at uh, at an age of 68 or 70 somebody has a illness 
and uh, then after recovery now they feel that okay i want to take a policy let us assume that there is a policy which will al- admit them at age 70 also let us as- assume that so even in that case when we put in an application suppose they say uh, i have this illness this illness i have high blood pressure i have diabetes and so on and so forth there is a very little chance that the it will pass medical underwriting Okay. so we can potentially apply for it but actually getting a medical insurance policy at that age will be truly challenging okay 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 thank you so much for your valuable inputs that brings us to the end of our episode if you would like to know more or make suggestions of a personal finance topic that you want us to cover you can reach out to me on twitter at amnavneet dubey thank you for tuning in see you in the next episode This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.